What is new about surrealism that you are showing here? Uh, we make a proposal which is to show surrealism not only as a factory of masterpieces, but also a philosophical, ethical, political, sociological project. It's why, it's why we wanted to emphasize on thematic, like the cosmos, which is the last room. Yeah, but is it new? to show surrealism like Not that? Not in this way, because you know most of this... What is really new? What did we discover about surrealism recently? Alors, since 2002, because we have to go back to 2002, which was the last big exhibition at the Pompidou. Mm -hmm. Just to give you an order, in this exhibition, there were only three women. This exhibition ended in 1945. This exhibition was mostly European artists. And this one is global in a way because we have some artists coming from Japan, from South America. Uh, there is, as you have seen, quite many, many women in the show. Yes. And, um, and there is a thematic, thematic organization of the show, which is to emphasize not on the whole history of art with a linear progress and so on, but rather a poetic universe, which is what the Surrealists used to do in their own exhibition. Uh, we have some sketches by Breton when he was planning different exhibition, when he was alive, and each time it was with thematic entry. One was devoted to Mel Melusine, the other to Rimbaud, the other to... We were inspired by this idea of uh, a thematic show. And the Surrealists were kind of uh, uh, f feminist? It was from the very beginning, really. Um, you know, the very first um, heroine of surrealism as a woman was Musadora. And it was just after the First World War. This woman was the woman, the, the ideal of a surrealist woman at that time, before the foundation of surrealist itself. It was in, in the very beginning of the 20s. And this woman was particular in this way, she was the daughter of one of the very first feminist militants in France, and her father was a, a Spanish anarchist. And when she became famous in France, one of the most famous actresses, uh, she was explaining uh, what is the freedom for a woman. And it was what the Surrealist wanted to emphasize. It's why later on in 28, Breton and Aragon decided to write a piece for her to play as, a, as an actress. And uh, the surrealist artists like Dorama, for example, were they treated as equal as men? Absolutely, they were in the, in the exhibition as well. Uh, you know, if the woman artist have, uh, was not that visible for years, it was not the fact of the surrealists themselves. They were part of the exhibition. They were part of the magazine, but the art historian of the time, the collectors, the curators, when they existed at the time, forget the woman. It's not the surrealist who, who, who put them aside. Uh, what about Breton? Do, did we discover some new things about Breton? No, for me, I discovered things because for years I was mostly Georges Bataille oriented. And I was like many people of my generation, thinking that Breton was on the side of the idealistic way and Bataille the real guy uh, dealing with, uh, with cruelty and, so, and things like that. Mm, uh, S&M. But now uh, I have a different idea. And recently I had quite discussion with uh, Jean-Claude Sieberman, who is the last artist surrealist living. He's uh, 87 old, seven years old. Wow. And recently, he told me again, Breton was the more gentle, the more generous, the more open mind man he has known. Wow. So uh, probably there is a distortion, which is the fact of the way surrealist has to be uh, destroyed by many intellectual and artists after the Second World War, because they wanted to take the place, they wanted to kill the father. And surrealist was everywhere at that time, and of course, uh, Communist Party was very strong, so they, uh, they tried to... But why Breton was important, so? He was important because he was able for 40 years to keep together poet and artists so different, with very strong personality. And he was the man able to make this federation for 40 years. So you can imagine, it, you have to be exceptional to do that. 
because it's not only one generation when he was 20 years old with his friends, it was when he was 50 years old with new artists coming and themselves 20 years old and so on. So he was an inspiration for all this generation of people who gathered and decided to come and join the surrealism. But he, he had a very special profile because he was very free, but in the same time very authoritarian. No, again... Yeah, like a teacher, like again, if you arrive again, late again, at the meeting, no, he's upset. Again, if you refer to, the, uh, to what the people who was part of the movement said about him, uh, they said no. Every decision was a collective decision. Well, this is one of the very strong, interesting point about surrealism. It's not the fact of one man. This is the, ma the, the fact of one group of artists. Uh, again, Siberman said this, ma this morning he was installing an uh, a piece here in the exhibition. He told me, what about the exclusion of Max Ernst, yes. which is one of the last. Oh, and, he said, and he said, no. It was not my, uh, Breton. During the discussion at the cafe, Breton was opposed to this exclusion. The one who decided and made pressure on the people of the group was Simon Taille. Ah. So it's, it's interesting. And there is many things like that we can reconsider. But to... when we read uh, about Magritte, for example, the fact that the wife had a cross, made yeah. upset Breton, yeah. and he fired Breton yeah. from the movement, right? Yes, he excluded not him as an artist, he pushed him out of his flat. This is the exact story. Mm. Uh, Magritte and Georgette was invited at uh, Breton's place and Georgette appeared at the dinner with a cross. And for Breton, it was not possible. <laughs> you can be a surrealist and be uh, no, a okay, religious person. No, okay, but she was not the artist. She was the wife of the artist. Yes, he said, Mrs., could you put that off, please? And, and Magritte said, no, it's, I can't do that, and they decided to go away. But uh, there's, there's kind, kind of authority in this movement. No, there is some principle, there is a, not so many, but for instance, if you want to be a surrealist, you don't have to deal with the art market in an obs... obs but right? but you Breton don't have... did with, uh, with uh, tribal art. Yes, he did. Yes. Yes, he did. <laughs> in English? Yes, what is the real difference? In fact, they were hiding when they were playing with the art market, right? Ouais, what about the relation ouais. of Breton and Duchamp? Did you, uh, do you show that in the show? No, but Duchamp is present in, with some objects, of course, erotic objects in the section devoted to Eros. But, uh, you know, Duchamp was mostly the man who organized the space in the Surrealist exhibition from 38 to very late uh, 47. And later on with Eros, he was still there. So he was all the man who decided the shape and the organization, the light and everything for the exhibition. Uh, and Breton, for Breton, it was a kind of devotion. Probably he was in, in kind of love mood with, with, with Marcel Duchamp. Uh -huh. uh, he was the man he respected. When, uh, Duchamp appeared in one meeting with the different surrealists. The people who witnessed this, this encounter used to say Breton was listening at, uh, at Duchamp like if it was uh, a voice coming from the heaven. Uh, and there is this very great devotion toward Duchamp uh, from, from Breton. Yeah. And there are several manifests du surrealism, right? There is two and a half, <laughs> let's say. There is the founding manifesto, Manifest du Surrealisme, 1924. There is a second manifest of surrealism in 1929. And there is what Breton expected to publish as a third manifesto, but it was never published. C'est le prolegomène à un troisième manifeste ou pas. Uh, and this text was published during the exile, in the, during the Second World War in the US. And if we take some distance and think about surrealism and the importance of surrealism, how is it important in general for 20th century surrealism? For us now, you mean? Yes. Yeah, but... Not the, only for people from the art, in yeah, general, yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. But I think one of the, one of the most important um, dimensions of surrealism, what we can see now, is what were their thoughts 
about the place of man in the cosmos, for instance. It's why they were looking for uh, other tradition coming from Papouasie, Nouvelle Zébride, and so on. And there is something which can be explained by the last film you see in the exhibition, which is a film written by Benjamin Perret. It was a film quite unknown from 54. And in fact, when I look at it, it appears to me as a, an answer to a very famous text of the time, which is uh, Le Musée Imaginaire by André Malraux. Mm. Uh, André Malraux is celebrating Europe and the value of Europe. Every dimension, every art produced on earth seems for him to be inspired by the Greek and Roman tradition. And here you have uh, people like uh, uh, Benjamin Perret who say no. It's much more interesting to see what the Hopi Indians did, did, what was made in Papouasie and so on. There is a un décentrement, there is a way to reconsider the place of uh, But culture. Breton and Eluard did, did, it, did, uh, did it early on, from the 20s and the 30s. Yes, right? from, but you know, they were, for instance, very active uh, as, as militant during the colonial exhibition in Paris in 1931. Yes. They made a counter exhibition, they published some manifesto against this exhibition. Uh, yeah, they were... So if, you, if we think about surrealism, they open the mind to the dream, they open the mind to other cultures, they did a lot, right? Yes, they did really a lot, and they, they gave a very easy and accessible definition of creation, which is you have to be free in your mind, you don't have to, to, to be under the pressure of your uh, surmoi, which is the part of your mind which is organizing your daily life, material life and so on, you have to, yes, you have to, you have to open your mind to, it's why it was the inspiration for the generation, it was the inspiration pop. for pop, it could be, pop, yes, it's interesting because this, this is what we wanted to show with the entrance of the show here in Paris, uh, this is a reconstitution of a cabaret entrance. And the idea was to demonstrate in a way, not in an explain in a sophisticated way, but just showing, yes, surrealism is connected with um, public entertainment. Yes, it's connected to uh, popular culture. And this you, is probably the first one. And you are showing also Bart Knight Newman. Yes. Why? Just because it's in a room devoted to what could be the core of the surrealist poetry, which is the idea of showing or looking for the apparition of life, the apparition of everything, the very birth of the world in a way. And this idea is seminal in all the surrealist history. Uh, probably if Tanguy is one of the painters who Barnett showed Newman. that. Yes, during the exile in the, uh, of the surrealist in the US, during the Second World War, they transmitted several very important values to the new generation of painters in the US. One of them was this idea of a genetic moment. This is exactly the title of Barnett Newman painting, as you have seen. Uh. And the other one was the idea of a mythology. And just after this type of painting by Newman, the same Newman decided to move also very close to surrealism by painting some mythology. Uh, Barnett, uh, but Pollock Rothko, too, so. Pollock did the same, but Rothko did the same. And did they meet Breton? Come. One of them, did he meet Breton? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Not but Barnett you know, Newman either. I don't think so. But you know, during the, the war, many uh, exhibitions were organized with work by Masson, who was living in the US, with work by Mata and so on. And there is a very seminal place for meeting Europe and American artists, it was the 17th Atelier. Uh, you know, this is Hater, who is a painter here in the exhibition. There is a big painting. Uh, he owned and organized a studio in Paris for engraving. Mm -hmm. During the Second World War, he moved to the US and he built again, but this time in New York. And of course, he was connected with the Surrealist, and we know that the very first engravings made by Pollock was made at Hater Studio. Ah. So he knew what Miro was making, what Maxence was making, and so 
there is some and very... Duchamp was a link to oh, well, he was of course he was the ambassador of not only surrealism but mostly surrealism yes yes merci beaucoup merci